Hi, this is Bethany with Shabby Fabrics, and I've got a new project I'm really excited to introduce to you today. We're going to be making a protective case for your laptop or tablet. And when I, a couple months ago, got a new laptop, shopped around and couldn't find a case that I really liked that fit my personality, so I decided to make one, and this is the project um, that I'm going to walk you through today. And it, this is great because it kind of helps protect your device against nicks and dings, and it also makes a really wonderful gift if you have maybe a student in your life or someone you know who um, travels a lot, help protect their device and uh, keep it safe from scratches. So let's jump into it. So we're going to start with a charm pack, and what we're going to do is cut this into quarters. Um, a lot of times your charm pack has a pinked edge on it, like a little zigzag edge, and um, if we lay this like on top of the cutting board here, you can see if I try to get that edge right to the corner, it's a little bit bigger than five inches. I find that the inside teeth of the pinked edge is where I want to start my measurement if I'm going to cut these in quarters to two and a half inches each, okay? And you can cut these one at a time. I like to layer them a little bit, get them all lined up perfectly, perfectly. And then I'll cut these into quarters, uh, again, two and a half inches. And you're gonna wanna do this for your entire charm pack. And I like to leave the charm pack down on the table and just move my ruler. Okay. And then you can stack these up however you like. Again, I'll go in with my next three or four layers here. And let's try this. And again, I'm measuring from the inside of the teeth, not the outside of the teeth on that pinked edge. Okay. I'll leave that charm pack down on the table and just move my ruler. And I find if I do this on point, like not um, parallel to the lines on my cutting mat, but um, on point to them, I can do these two cuts without having to move these. We would do this for our entire charm pack. And once we get there, we're ready to start laying out our fabric. Okay. Okay. So we, um, we have the option here, as you can see, we've done this on point and we've got two and a half inch squares just pieced together. We're trying to make a large piece of fabric that we will then cut our pattern pieces from. And you can, of course, take these to your machine and just sew these together with a quarter inch as you like, um, one at a time. I like to work a little uh, faster than that and I want to see the entire layout before I start sewing. So I'm going to show you a trick that my mom taught me on how to get these all laid out and then sew them really, really fast. Okay. So I, we're gonna um, use a piece of interfacing. This will be down on a work surface, like if you have a large ironing board. You'll be working at the ironing board for this because it's gonna be hard to transfer it later, but this is a feasible interfacing. And we would take our squares and we're gonna lay them out on here and then press them down to this before we even sew. Um, I like to start in a corner we're gonna line these up on point and then lay these out in whatever pattern you find most pleasing. Um, and then when we lay these out, we're gonna to want to leave about a 16th of an inch between all of these. I'm gonna find some fabrics that are like here. And um, I don't need to draw any kind of grid or anything like that. I'm going to just lay these out by hand and again, I'm skipping around some of these fabrics here until I find maybe a color that contrasts a little bit more. These two are kind of dark, so I might go back to one of my lighter fabrics and add this here. I'm gonna lay out the whole thing. We're gonna have a yard and a quarter of the interfacing, and that's enough to get all four stacks of your um, charm packs here laid out on the whole thing. And it's okay if these are overhanging the uh, interfacing a little bit. I like to at least cover the entire thing. You might have like a little V of fabric showing like on this end if these come here. That might be showing a little bit, that's fine. I have one I prepped for you that I wanna show you. Um, it's already like adhered down to the uh, fusible. So let me pull that out for you. Mm -hmm. 
And again, yours is going to be much bigger than this, but for the sake of the size of the table I'm working on, this is what I've got here. And I'll, um, I've already adhered this or fused this down to the interfacing, but I want to show you what it looks like on the back. Okay. So some of these squares are really only on with a small portion. It's okay as long as we cover our entire interfacing. And um, when we press this, I do want to let you um, just be aware that it, you do have a little bit of interfacing and a little bit of that um, adhesive showing through on these cracks here. So be sure to put down a pressing sheet uh, and protect your iron. And when we do press, we want to kind of press up and down. We don't want to drag us across because even with the sheet down, we might be moving our squares and we just took all this time to lay them out. Uh, so we want to be really careful about that. But once you get your whole top laid out and then fuse down, then we get to start the fun, we get to do the sewing, okay? And here's where this technique comes in so handy, is what we're gonna be doing is taking this to our machine, we'll sew, uh, so we'll fold the first row over, we're gonna sew a quarter inch right on here, and we're gonna do that for all the rows. I like to sew all of them at once, um, and then I'll show you how we um, prepare this for the, um, the next row, the other direction of sewing. So we have sewn all of the seams in one direction. Um, and you see we got all that patchwork done without having to piece these individually. Now what we're going to want to do is press this, but there's a little work we have to do before that. I'm going to move the case of the laptop out of the way here. We're going to go in with some scissors, and we are going to snip in between on that fold in between the two fabrics just up to the thread that we've just sewn. And if you do cut through that thread a little bit, that's fine, because that seam is already sewn. It's not gonna affect the integrity of this if we accidentally clip that thread a little bit. But we're gonna wanna go through and press, or and, uh, clip each of these between the fabrics. Okay, and what this is gonna do is help it fold, because um, we're gonna go through and sew the next direction. If it's not clipped here, it makes it a little more difficult, a little more bulky to fold this. Okay. Okay, so at our machine, we're going to want to press this. And because when we fold this to do our next seam, we don't want a lot of bulk with all of the seams going the same direction, we're going to press every other row in the opposite direction to allow for nested seams. Okay. Um, sometimes you might want to like hang this off of the edge of your ironing board and press in one direction, hang that down and press the other direction, whatever works best for you. Uh, sometimes I have to do it this way so that I'm not repressing some strips or some seams in the opposite direction that I just pressed them. But we'll get that here. So this one's coming towards me. This next row is gonna go away from me. Okay. And then the row after that will go in the opposite direction, and we'll just continue until we have the whole uh, piece here pressed. Okay, we've got our last seams pressed how we'd like them to go. And as you can see, this is laying just beautifully. And we're going to do the same thing we did. We're going to fold on the fold. Uh, and so a quarter inch straight across, and these should nest just perfectly without having to match up any seams. The interfacing is going to do all the work for us. So we'll get all of those seams sewn, and then when we bring this back from our machine, we'll press all the remaining seams in the same direction. All right, so we've got all of the seams in the other direction pressed now, and we're just gonna press all of these to one direction. Um, sometimes I might press them out from the middle, but I think today I'll press everything here. And I did this um, from the front this time. And one thing I just love about this technique using the interfacing to lay these out is I get this super intricate patchwork done really fast. 
Um, and it's super accurate. If the camera can catch this and we can zoom in, these points are just right on the money matched up there. And just, um, my normal patchwork in real life, not using this technique is not this good. So I like this. It makes everyone think I'm way better at sewing than I actually am. Okay, we've got this all pressed out. And of course, you're gonna be working with a yard and a quarter by 20 on the interfacing. So your piece is gonna be much bigger than this. It should come down to about 17 by 35 once it's all sewn. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna fuse it to a single side fusible flex foam. It's like a quarter inch foam from uh, Pellon, I believe. And I've already done that here on our big piece that we're gonna actually be cutting our uh, pattern pieces from. Okay, so my big piece, I don't square this up. I'm gonna work with it uh, like this. This is that foam, it's got a really good body to it. We'll add a lot of, um, like help to protect your case. Your, sorry, the case will be protective for your device, that's the one. <laughs> Um, so you might be thinking, okay, Bethany, great technique for the patchwork, but how is this um, customizable to my device? So we're going to go to the pattern. I can find that wherever I put it. And the pattern's going to have a little um, kind of like rubric for you to fill out based off of the measurements of your device, okay? So we've sewn all of our squares together. We're gonna actually need to grab our device now and do some measurements, fill this out, and do some very, very simple math here. So I'm gonna grab this here, grab a pen. And so we want um, the length, the width, and then the height would be here to here on the device. So I'm gonna grab a ruler, and I want the length of the entire device at its widest point. And then we also say if we don't land exactly on a quarter inch increment, we're gonna round up to the nearest whole quarter inch or like next quarter inch. So I'm at 14 and an eighth. I'm gonna round this to 14 and a quarter, okay? 14, one quarter. We're adding, you know what? No, we're gonna go to that next 14 and a quarter. Um, we'll do the length here. I am right at nine and a half on the money, so. Nine, one, half. And then it says, um, we have a measurements here for a device that's less than a half inch thing. Like maybe you have a tablet or like a really, really thin um, laptop that's less than a half inch. We would use this math here. Um, I can see this is more than a half inch and I'm gonna grab a smaller ruler and actually measure that. I've got one, sorry, I've got five eights here. Nope, because I can do math. I've got seven eights here. <laughs> um, we're gonna round that up to um, one inch. Um, so if, it's, if your device is thicker than a half inch, we're gonna use this set of um, measurements over here. So I'm gonna transfer my measurements over here. I had 14 and a quarter, I had nine and a half. For a device measuring more than a half inch in thickness, we're going to add two and a half inches to the length. So we're going to do 14, 15, 16, and three quarters. That'll be the length, and then our width will be nine and a half plus one and a half will be 11 inches even. So 16 and three quarters by 11 will be our pattern piece for the front and back of our device sleeve. And then we're going to want to take the length of the device. So I had 14 and a half. We're going to add a half inch to 15, and we have a 15 by six will be the size of the um, the like envelope flap here, okay? So I'm gonna get those pieces cut out. We're gonna cut through the foam, the fabric, everything. Um, and this is where you're gonna square up and cut off these like raw edges. Um, you might want to maybe center um, one of the like points as best as you can, uh, but we'll get these cut out for you. All right, and on uh, for this device sleeve, um, you know this will obviously fit like a small tablet or a small laptop. I measured um, the biggest laptops on the market right now are about 17 inches, and that's the size of the screen diagonally. Um, I think if your device is 17 inches or smaller, you should be able to get your uh, whole device sleeve out of this. 
Um, if you are anything like my father and your laptop is maybe from before 2008 and you just can't get rid of it and it's like more than an inch and a half thick, maybe an inch and a quarter thick, maybe this isn't the right project or you might have to add some inches to your measurements here. Um, but if your laptop was made in the last two years, um, you should be good making the device following the pattern instructions exactly. Okay, we've got our pattern pieces cut out. Again, this is the flap, this is the front and back. Um, we want to turn this into that envelope shape. So how we do that is we're going to measure two and a half inches down from the top of this on each of the short sides here. And I'm just gonna mark that with a friction pin right on the edge. And go two and a half. And then we'll mark the very center of this. I know this is 15 inches across for my uh, particular device. Um, so we're gonna do that at seven and a half. We will measure and mark. Okay, and then from those points that we drew down to the center, we're gonna cut on those lines and uh, turn this into that envelope shape. Oh, I'm gonna use a smaller ruler for this. Now we're gonna go back to our pattern. We've got that flap done here. We are gonna take the um, beginning measurements, sorry, the, um, the cut measurements that we just did and plug those in to get the size of our lining. The lining is gonna be a little oversized than these. Just because we are working with some 1 8 seam allowances, I want to have just a little bit more for the fabric, or sorry, the thread to grab onto. So our size 17 and a quarter by 11 and a half, 15 and a half by seven. We'll cut two of these and one of these to get our lining pieces here. Okay, we are ready to start adding our lining to our foam pattern pieces here. And what we're gonna do first, because um, we wanna be able to close this laptop sleeve once we have it made. Uh, so I'm gonna take a piece of, this is uh, the mask elastics, works perfect for this. I'm gonna cut like a four inch piece off of this. And that will be the loop that we add here and we wanna add it right at this step. I found the easiest way to add this is to kind of crisscross the ends a tiny bit. We're gonna place that right on the point of the right side of our um, like envelope flap here, and we're gonna pin this in place. I like to take this to my machine and just add a little like basting stitch real quick before we get the um, lining on. Okay, so with that, I can get the pin out of the way. This is going the direction I want it. And we are going to layer this right on top of the fabric here. We're gonna align the raw edges. And this is gonna overhang, that's okay. Again, our first seams here are gonna be 1 8 seam allowance. Um, and that's not all, like there's, you know, with, with the foam here, that thread's gonna be doing a lot of work to hold all this together. Um, so I wanted to give it as much fabric as, not as much as possible, but like enough to hold on to that it's not gonna tear that fabric or anything. So we're gonna go through, I like to pin this from underneath and you don't have to go all the way through the foam. We're just gonna go through it a little bit, just enough to secure this. Uh, in later steps when the project gets more bulky, we're gonna go and move to um, wonder clips. But for now, I like the accuracy and the precision of the pins. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna trim this extra fabric off, give it about a half inch from the seam we just did. And because the seam's already sewn, this doesn't have to be super, super accurate because the seam's already there holding in this in place. Okay. Now we're gonna follow basically the same steps here for one piece of our front. Okay, once we've got that trimmed up, we're gonna wanna turn this inside out. And again, that, um, that eighth inch seam allowance instead of a quarter, it's just there because I didn't want a lot of bulk right on this seam when you're turning this inside out uh, to kind of distract from the beauty of your uh, case here. So we're just going with uh, that eighth inch to help it turn easier on this really thick foam. Okay, you can grab your point to point turner and push these corners out and then we'll head to this ironing board and get that pressed super, super flat. So we've set this aside, now it's time to grab one of our rectangles that'll be the front or back of the bag. The first one we grab will be the front of the bag. And as you can see here, a big portion of that gets covered. So for me, the bottom portion is what's gonna show the most. I wanna make sure I love that fabric. Um, and when I look at this, this fabric here is really calling to me, this kind of fiery orange. So I want that to be the bottom of my bag. So when I layer my fabric, and I'll actually just put this down first, remember that I had my bottom towards me, and layer this on top. Um, we're gonna sew, again, an eighth inch seam allowance all around, that bottom will remain open. So that's how I know it's the bottom of my bag there, okay? I'm gonna again pin this in place and then get that eighth inch quarter, or sorry, eighth inch seam allowance sewn all the way around this. All right, again, we're gonna leave that overhang fabric on. We're not gonna trim that off. I'm not gonna trim the corners. We're just gonna pop this right inside out, inside out, right away. And again, grab that point to point turner to get these corners out nice and beautifully. Beautiful. Ooh. Okay, and again, we'll take this to our machine, give it a nice press to get it as, sorry, not our machine, our iron, get it a nice press to get it as flat as possible. Okay. okay, that is our front piece, again, the bottom is uh, the open edge here. We're gonna set that aside and grab the back piece. And I think I like this to be the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we'll lay this uh, with the bottom towards you, face up on a work surface. We'll grab the flap. Um, this is gonna go wrong side up or lining side up, and this is gonna be centered on the top here. So we don't want it over to one side. We want it centered and flush with the raw edge. Okay, I'm going to pin this. So um, it's gonna be really hard to pin through this. So instead of going through all the layers, I'm just gonna catch a little bit of the foam on both sides um, and get that just kind of stabilized in a couple spots. Here. Just going into the foam just a little bit to get this stabilized. Okay. With that on, we are going to grab the lining and this will go right sides together with the both pieces here. Um, again, I like to fold this over. It's a little bit easier for me. We'll get that pinned in place, 
and we're gonna sew again. Um, we're gonna do an eighth inches on the side. This time we are gonna do a full quarter inch at the top to get that um, flat piece really secure in there. Okay, I'll head to the machine. Again, one more time. Eighth inch seam allowance on the side, quarter inch seam allowance on the top. Okay, this we're gonna turn inside out. Beautiful. Oh. Okay. That flap there is, both linings should be together. Ooh, and look, by a happy mistake, my pattern on my fabric kind of lined up. Um, I'm gonna take that and just uh, not call it a happy mistake. That's definitely intentional. That was my uh, wonderful skill as a sewer. Uh, I'm definitely um, not just random. We'll get this pressed really flat. And then I like to go in, now that I've got all three pieces done, um, you can quilt this however you'd like. I'm definitely gonna add a little seam across the top here, about a quarter inch from the flap to help secure that down. Um, but you can quilt this as however you like, as much or as little as you like. I think our sample here doesn't have any quilting and it still looks pretty marvelous. So um, we did add that little seam at the top right behind the flap though. Okay, just a couple more steps remain. We've got the back, the front, we'll put these right sides together and we're gonna align these raw edges, okay? And we finally get to use a quarter inch seam allowance for real here. We're gonna sew both sides and the bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance. I lied, we're gonna use an eighth inch seam allowance. We'll do a quarter inch on the bottom here. Um, and then we are going to um, add a couple little things to get this kind of rounded here, but let's clip this in place with the Wonder Clips and get that, um, that sewn. Okay. Just a few more seams. From this bottom corner here, I want to grab a tiny ruler. Aha. I like to use this diagonal here, and I want to come in about three quarter of an inch. So that's a whole inch. We're going to come in three quarter of an inch. I'm going to mark that corner, and I want to draw a diagonal line on that. Okay, just about three quarter inch from the corner. Okay, we're gonna sew right across that and then trim off the excess here. This is gonna help round the corners a little bit. Okay, we'll trim this excess a little bit and then these raw edges here, this one, this one, and this one here, we're just gonna go in with a zigzag and um, kind of just catch this loose foam and fabric and encase that. That'll be the only kind of exposed seam that we have on this, but that'll be well inside the device here, the um, device sleeve. So I'll do that real quick, and then we'll turn this inside out and see what we've got for our finished product. Okay, that bottom seam is enclosed now. We're ready to flip this inside out. We're gonna wrestle with it a little bit. I'm kind of concentrating on not flinging these off the table, so I'm gonna move those. Beautiful. 
All right, you can give this a good press with a steam iron if you like. But our last little bit is to add a button here. So let me measure that. And usually what I do is just put the loop down. I want the holes of the button right where the like inside of the loop is. So I'm gonna mark that with my friction pen. We're gonna sew a button on real quick and this will be done. So again, graduation season is among us. College acceptance letter season is among us. If you've got a student in your life uh, who's pursuing their education further, this is a great gift to give them uh, as they head out to do that. Um, and really, there's I don't know a single person who doesn't have a laptop or a tablet. So this would be a great just personal gift to give them, give them some extra protection for their device to help against like the little nicks and dings. And um, if you haven't already, just head over to our YouTube channel. Make sure you like the video, leave us a comment. Um, I really do love hearing from you guys. Love your comments. And um, if you have any technical questions or uh, you know have a video that you wanna see that we haven't done yet, let us know in the comments so we can bring that to you. Okay. As I struggle with this button. Aha, there we go. And you know, I, I mentioned this is fat quarters here, sorry, um, a charm pack that we use. But if you've got, you know, really any, um, any charm pack that you like, or even if you have like some mini charms, this would take four packs of mini charms, you are gonna use most of those. I think I had maybe two or three of the five inch squares worth of the little squares that I didn't use. So maybe out of that 42 fabrics, there's one that you don't like as much as the others. You can always take that out and you should still have plenty, plenty of fabric here. That's our sleeve. Moment of the truth. Let's see if our device fits. Beautiful. Right on the money. You have a great little device uh, sleeve here that again, this will work for tablets or laptops. Thanks so much for joining me today and taking the time to watch this video. Have a good day to you.